What did you think of the ambassador's statement? He says he was misquoted or taken out of context. I note that he was reading off a prepared speech in perfect English. What do you think? Uh, I also read and heard the same thing. I don't think it's misquoted. You know, this, it is. You know, the message is uh, we should do something which is actually contrary to our policy of not intervening in the, uh, you know, the Taiwan issue that to oppose uh, Taiwan's independence. That's why the policy is not to intervene, to maintain the status quo as it is. But then, of course, he mentioned that if we have, uh, we really care about the 1,500, uh, 1,000, uh, 150,000 Filipinos. So it's obviously referring to the fact that it's a veiled threat, you know, in whatever form. Right. Uh, uh, Professor, Senator Risa Ontiveros has already made a call asking Malacanang to recall or, uh, quote-unquote, expel Ambassador Huang Xilian, send him back to Beijing. Do you, what do you think this, of this move, of this call? Do you think the government will heed it? Uh, I think it's too drastic. Mm -hmm. Probably it's time for the uh, Assistant Secretary of the Asia-Pacific Affairs to uh, uh, summon him. <clears throat> so that's the best thing. It asks him to explain. So that's how diplomacy works. I think that would be too drastic to declare him persona non grata. Just taking a look at what happened with the laser pointing incident a few months back and then this one saying that... Um, the, the Chinese envoy was simply miscoded. Do you think they're also employing gray zone tactics when it comes to diplomacy, ironically? Oh, no, that's what you call the wolf warrior diplomacy. Mm. Uh, that's a different thing. I, you know, it's part of the gray zone, but you have a specific term, wolf warrior diplomacy. And what does the, that mean? Uh, the uh, diplomat had to take a very offensive action that, of course, uh, began during the time of the pandemic to really uh, put the ball on the other, uh, other person's court. So this is how I analyze it. You know, very strong, uh, in a way, criticizing us for an entirely, you know, domestic matter. You know, EDCA, although it, has, it pertains to our relationship with the United States, the EDCA sites are inside Philippine territory. So he took a very strong position in a way that is, of course, a challenge to our sovereignty All and right. other statements he gave. Right. So that's Professor? classic. Yeah. Do you think, uh, because of course, obviously they perceive that these additional EDCA sites with three being closer to Taiwan than the West Philippine Sea, of course, they perceive this also as a, some kind of soft threat coming from the Philippines and maybe uh, with the United States as well. So that is in retaliation to that? Uh, no, not retaliation. Warning us, you know, against expressing their alarm, which is, of course, misplaced. Because this is uh, one thing I pointed out. China always emphasized the importance of sovereignty and not in the interference in the domestic affairs of other countries. But clearly, you know, he's showing the fact that when it comes to the, uh, China's dealing with the Philippines, this, of course, does not apply. China is free to basically, uh, in a way, meddle in our domestic affairs because uh, whether those sites are located in Batanes, whether those sites are located in Ilocos, one thing is clear, those sites are within Philippine territory. Unlike, of course, those artificial islands that they have militarized in the South China Sea. And of course, four of them are located in our exclusive economic zone, right?